Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, I'll be sharing the dreams of nuclear war and tsunamis as end times events experienced by one of our brothers in Christ. You can find the link to his original video in the description below. For now, let's dive in and explore his profound experience together. Hey guys, it's Brother Tommy coming to you again. Now, what I'll talk to you is about some dreams, visions, things I've had through the years and uh some of them have been absolutely wonderful but they have been some that's been very very frightful um i am uh absolutely positively sure that we're living in the last of the last days you know the day of the lord can happen at any moment waiting i believe it's titus 2 13 you know waiting on the lord that blessed hope on the day the Lord shall return. I want to thank everyone for all your likes, for your shares, and I want to thank you for your comments. You know, some of you have even been praying for, you know, God's going to take care of you. Everything's going to be all right with you. But uh, just want you to know that I do appreciate what you do you know it, it really means a lot to me uh i'm not big on making videos or anything like this and you know i think this in here is going to be like my fourth one you know but i don't believe god gives us things for us to set back on uh, you can't have your cup filled full again till you empty out uh what's in it and the lord has gave me dreams and visions through the years and you know now i'm releasing them to you so this particular video you know it's it's in warning of things that are to come and i fully believe it's after the rapture of the church um i didn't ask for these dreams you know but god knows who he can instill things to, his people that will share them. We might be a little slow about getting it done, yeah, but <laughs> nevertheless, praise God, here we are. We're, uh, we're releasing these videos, and I, 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 I ask you, please, please consider and listen carefully. Please take heed, because they are very serious, and uh, we are in the last days. And uh, the good thing is, is that if you see this video, the rapture has not happened yet, you know. But it is soon and quickly approaching us, even at the door. I have no doubt about that. Uh, I know a lot of these dreams that I've had through the years, you know, looking back, that God was giving it to me as well to share to people, but also to prompt me and to warn me, you know, get things in order, you know. Uh, don't want to be left behind, and I don't. I don't, and I assure you, I've been doing some soul searching, uh, working on me, setting things uh, right between me and God, doing some repenting, uh, you know, some soul searching. It's, it's a good thing that we do that. You know, I, I'm, I, I'm nothing. I'm just a little old country boy here in the hills of East Tennessee. I was originally born and raised in Northwest Georgia. Love my home in Georgia. Wish I could go back, but uh, I'm here <laughs> for, for right now. And that's okay, you know. Uh, God put me up here for a while. I've been here since uh, 1990. Not knowing really what was Ollie, what was to fully and all to uh, transpire for my life, but God had a plan, and that's good. And I thank God that He intervened and He knows what He's doing. Uh, but like I said, these dreams I've had, I, I didn't ask for these, but God gave them to me. You know, I guess, I guess past several years, like twenty. 13, 14, maybe even even earlier, you know, I've been having dreams and visions of nuclear war. And I'm telling you, they they are very frightening what I've been seeing in them. Uh, 
I've seen clouds mushroom up, uh, see the destructive debris of busted trees and one thing and another, you know, just flying towards, uh, coming at me and different stuff like that. And, you know, and feel the heat uh, from these things is absolutely mind-blowing. It's so horrific uh, seeing these things, you know. And I've, I've visited uh, several states. I've been to Kentucky, Tennessee, and Georgia, Indiana, Ohio, you know, through my life. And, you know, and then these dreams I've, I've seen being in Georgia. I dreamed of even being in uh, Kentucky, you know, here in Tennessee. Uh, and seeing these nuclear uh, plumes going up, you know, and uh, no matter where it is. And, you know, it's a horrible thing, horrible thing for uh, to see something like it. Wake me up out of my sleep, heart pounding, you know. And, I mean, it's very, very, I mean, this, this kept on going uh, for several years, several years having these type of dreams so now I'm telling them to you, and I fully believe that they are coming. I uh, also have had dreams of uh, tsunamis as well. Uh, one particular was in this one dream, me and my son and his fiance, we was in Florida, and a big wave came in on the shore and it wiped out the town, but we was kept safe. You know, we was, God took care of us. And, uh, Seeing the destruction that happened there, it just wiped out that place and something else. And these other two dreams that I've had about tsunamis, um, uh, one, it had came pretty close to me, but it didn't reach me. You know what I'm saying? And this last one that I had of a tsunami, a giant wave coming, uh, is that I was at my home place when my dad passed away in Georgia and I was outside talking to some people and I could see the giant wave. It was way higher than the mountains uh, there across from where my dad lived there. You know, the mountains down in Georgia ain't as high as they are here in East Tennessee. And, uh, and I could see it coming across towards the mountain and coming over and as it came into a point, there was nothing you could do. There was nowhere you can go. That's what I was saying and thinking, you know. There's nothing you can do but seeing it come. And I was hearing it to a point so close. Did you ever, you ever go be driving on a uh, overclass, overcast day and it's, they got forecast for rain and whatever else, and it's not raining then all it was, then you run into the rain and how it hits the windshield of your car, just how it sounds. That's how close I was and seeing that when I was at the back of the corner of the house of my dad's home there in Georgia, I could hear the water and the waves start hitting the front glass of the house. And you know, and I, then that was it, you know. They are a lot of things happening in this world today. And, uh, you know, you want to be ready. You don't want to be left behind uh, when the Lord comes. And this is why me and so many other on YouTube are making these videos to warn you. We're telling you, you know, get ready, set your house in order, repent, Turn to Christ Jesus. Receive Him as your Lord and as your Savior. Be born again by the Spirit of the living God. And the Lord said through His Apostle, If you have not His Spirit, you're none of His. If you're not none of His, you're not going home with Him. You're going to be left behind. The Lord said in there in His Word, He said, You are sealed with the Holy Ghost, seal of promise until the day of redemption. And that's how important, most important it is to receive the blood, to be washed in, your blood, washed in the blood of Jesus and be cleansed from all unrighteousness and to be in right standing with God and to receive the promise of His Spirit. That way you're sealed. God will keep you all the way. 
to that day and beyond and see you into glory to be with you. You know, these dreams and visions that I've had have been something. In one particular dream that I had, you know, uh, it started out that I was running. It was a pretty day outside and I was running and somebody was, or some people were chasing me. You know, and uh, I ran as far as I could run, got to a pine tree and was kneeling or sat down in front of the pine tree on the opposite side. And as I was sitting there, the people who was chasing me caught up with me. And they had something in their hand and uh, they was literally cutting my head off while I was there, cutting my head off. The strange thing was about it, I know they was doing it. I could feel them doing it, but I didn't have no pain. And what happened next, uh, my eyes were opened. And uh, while this was going on, because I, surely you're gonna lose your head, you're gonna die, you know. So that being said, my eyes were open and I seen people on the other side that was as if they were young children and they was calling me by my middle name. And they were saying, Lee, hurry up, you know, hang on. Basically, they was encouraging me to endure that. And all at once, I was on the other side. We was in this great big old uh, open field, green, beautiful field. You know, a place not here. You know, thank God. And uh, we was walking along. The part of this dream I won't share because it has to, it's personally with me. And uh, I won't disclose that. You know, I won't say much about that. But all at once, I seen a big mountain to my right side. And on that right side, of the, on, on that mountain to my right, I seen a burning bush up on the side of that mountain burning, not consumed, but I seen that burning bush. Then what I seen next was absolutely amazing. I seen the Lord himself. And friend, listen, he was bigger than the mountain. He was so much bigger than the mountain. He was dressed in a solid white robe had a beautiful blue sash on. Whenever I acknowledged that it was him, oh my gosh, it just hit me all over. I was drove straight to my knees instantly. And all I could do was cry, holy, 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 holy he is the Lord God Almighty. I mean, at the top of my literal voice, hard as I could literally get it out. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And friend, he is holy. And you know, God has allowed me to see him in different ways through the years, through visions, dreams. They're always welcome. <laughs> Anytime I can see my Lord, I love him. And I know he loves me, and that's awesome. You know, and uh, for the people that's left, going to be left behind, should I say it that way? The unimaginable hell that's going to take place here on this earth. Stephen King can't come up with a movie or direct or whatever it is they do uh, for anything like that. They are things that's at work here in this world. The prince of darkness, the prince of the power of the air that's at work. The Antichrist spirit and different things that's been at work. These are all been working to bring forth a one world government. They got people, places, headquarters and things like that. They've got set up uh, to usher in this stuff. They're waiting. And if you'll read and look upon this stuff, 
look it up on videos. You'll find out some of the videos that are trustworthy is End Time Productions. Look upon them, and you'll see what I'm talking about. These people that are Satanism, uh, the occult, Illuminati, different things that that stuff, skull and bones, uh, voodoo, witchcraft in general, black magic, white magic, you don't make no difference. It's all satanic. Uh, palm reading, all that stuff. Is satanic. And this guy in this video had interviewed some of these people. And they said they was waiting. They said they could smell Christian blood. They're waiting. They can't do nothing. Because they are restrained. <clears throat> they can't do nothing. But once the church is gone, the unimaginable hell is going to be released on this earth. It's going to be unimaginable. You won't be able to phantom it uh, for the fear and the things that's going to happen. People killing one another rampantly. Car wrecks, train wrecks, airplane wrecks. When the rapture happens, and people were gone that controls these vehicles, trains, planes, whatever, and they're raptured out of here. There's no pilots. There's nobody to conduct the train. There's nobody to steer the car. They're gone. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be changed in the moment of a twinkle of an eye and be caught up with the Lord, and so ever shall we be with the Lord. Water, food, things of that nature will become scarce. Your daily essentials that it takes to survive is going to come hard. And it's going to be sought after by bad people. And if you are left behind here, listen to what I'm going to tell you. Please, please, please take heed to what I'm going to tell you in these next few words. Once the mark of the beast is initiated for people to take. Please, and I say this in all sincerity of my heart, and beg you, do not receive that mark. It'll be in your right hand and your forehead. Do not take it. If you do, there's no more hope for you. You're damned for all eternity from the presence of the Lord. There's no way you can ever be saved. Read it in the book of Revelations about the number of the beast and those that receive his number and his mark and his name. There's no more hope. To you that don't receive this mark, and Lord, I hope there are many of you that don't, please know this one thing. You will have to die for the Lord Jesus Christ. Many of you will probably end up being uh, beat, killed some way, heads removed from off your body. But God will take care of you. You know, there's some very uncertain and unsettling times we're living in. And uh, I wish I could save the world. I wish I could do something. I pray for every man and woman and child on the face of this earth every night before I go to sleep and for my family. But not every man and not every woman and not every child is going to receive the gospel. And uh, that's sad to say, but that's just the way it is. God knows them that are his. He knows his people, and he won't lose none of his children. And he said that in uh, St. John. All that my Father has given me, I have lost none, except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And my Father is greater than I am, and no man's able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. So, 
That man said, you know, guys, if you don't know God and you've not received Jesus Christ into your heart, today is the day of salvation. You're not seeing this video by accident. You're not seeing it by accident. This is for you. God has made a way for you to see and to hear and have an opportunity. And what you do with that opportunity, that's totally up to you. And if you do, act cordially and ask God to come in your heart and accept Jesus Christ. Amen. It'd be a wonderful thing. The Bible says there's more rejoicing over one sinner that repented than the 99 that are found. But the prayer is simple to be born again. All you got to do is just repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Father, I come to you as I am a sinner. I believe that you sent your son into this world to die for me and in my place. I believe this in my heart. Lord, I confess this with my mouth that you are the son of the living God. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Wash me in your blood. And seal me, Lord, till the day of redemption. Teach me to lead, uh, live for you as you show me. And Lord, and thank you for what you've done for me. I thank you, Father, for loving me so much that you gave your son. And I proudly receive this free gift of eternal life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that it's done. If you prayed that prayer, do yourself a favor. Go to some brother, some sister, and tell them. Say, look, I am a Christian today. I've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Get in the Bible. If you ain't got one, go buy one. And start reading in the New Testament what all Jesus done. And the accounts that he gave. Find you a good church to go to and get in it and live for God each and every day as he shows you how and teaches you and helps you. And if you've been born again and you've drifted away from the Lord, God said he's married to the backslider. Come home. Quit running from God. Quit running from him. Turn away from what you're in. Repent of what you're doing. Come home. The Father is watching. He's looking. He sees you from afar off. Yeah, you're going through a lot. You got a lot going on with you. But the lot that's going on with you is because of your own choices. And you need to repent and you need to come home. You know what I'm talking about. There's no deception here. You know what you need to do. Things won't get no better. Things won't turn around until you do. But once you make that decision to do it, to run back and go back to the father's house. The Bible says about the prodigal son that the father seen him afar off 